But the uh, Yes California movement is not a new movement. It's been around for a couple of years. They set up their um, they set up their nonprofit organization a couple of years ago. They were anticipating that there would be a time in which they might make active their Yes California. Yes California is a secessionist movement, unlike Jefferson, which is a movement to break away from the state of California and to form a more perfect union by forming the 51st state. Does that make sense? So we know the difference there. But uh, in the case of um, what you have with the secessionist movement, they want to secede and become their own country. And this, this is Jerry Brown's real big dream. Now I said Jerry Brown and all that. Okay, but the secessionist movement, and I want to try and, um, you'll notice that it came out really kind of directly on the result of the Brexit thing, the Brexit thing, which is kind of interesting because... Um, not only that, but you have the Oregon it, exit or whatever. You have uh, Texas. You have a whole bunch of states now. And if you notice, this is all since uh, what's gone on in Great Britain. Now, what Great Britain is going to do is Great Britain is going to go back to its old style, its old school, and become a great empire again. They're going to have these trading partners. They've got trading partners like you cannot believe, but because of... Um, because of the European Union, they have not been allowed to trade with them. And Great Britain has been doing nothing but funneling in euros and pounds sterlings into all these other countries that are dependent in the EU. So the bottom line is they got tired of it. But you have some uh, strange oddities going on. And this gets to that story I said when I was in 1992, I went across the border for the first time and they lowered their borders in Europe for the European Union and it became a borderless state. But there was a, uh, his name was Ben, he was a reporter that was reporting uh, Friday uh, with Fox News and he was kind of elated but he was scared and he, had, he was about 30 years old. And he had no idea what people were going to do and he was saying, nobody in Great Britain knows what to do next, we don't know what to do. Well, of course, he doesn't have any institutional knowledge to really realize or understand historically that Great Britain was one of the, the world's greatest empires and trading was a big part of that. And they're not too far away by which they can bring all that back. But you have a whole generation that's been used to getting what? The freebies and not working. So this is the big challenge of Great Britain. Now, the Brexit movement is being utilized here in this country to, to do one thing and one thing only. And I want to make this clear because you have to think about the globalists now. The globalists want to destroy the United States of America. What better way than if you have five or six states that secede than to break up the union? Think about that. And that's what this is all designed to do. The money's coming in from Europe for all this stuff. Um, we've, you want to mention the connections there, Red, about uh, Yes California? This yeah, is going to shock um, you. When Yes California started um, popping up, um, started coming across the Jefferson boards and things, immediately started digging into, okay, who are these guys? What are they about? Are they allies? Are they somebody that we need to stay away from? Um, got digging into who they are, um, their, their president um, of the uh, movement itself spent uh, several years in Russia as a uh, teacher over in Russia until he actually moved to the Islamic Republic of Tatarstan where he took him his, uh, where he met his wife at a uh, Muslim and um, converted to Muslim or to Islam. They moved back to the San Diego area um, where they connected with a guy by the name, uh, his name is Marinelli. Louis, Louis K. Marinelli, I believe it is, is the president of this Yes California movement. He's the one that lived in Russia, um, converted to Islam when he took his, took his wife, Alexia, or um, Alessand Alessandria. So either way, he met his wife there. They moved to San Diego. Their lead spokesman is a um, Ruiz Edwards, what his first name, Marcel or Mark uh, Ruiz Evans, is um, 
I'm finding connections to La Rasa. Uh, he is also the lead author for uh, Mitsuzuki Publishing House, which is a uh, Muslim-funded publishing house. They're, the uh, name Mitsuzuki actually translates as to the moon of the third night, or literally the crescent moon, which is the symbol of um, Islam. Got digging into them, and then came across the uh, Sasakawa Peace Foundation. Now, for those of you that have listened to the radio shows uh, and Agenda 21, you know that the uh, Sasakawa Peace Foundation was founded by a guy named Ryochi Sasakawa, who set up the World Health Organization. He also was the head of the Yakuza in Japan. He also ran a couple of little companies called Mitsubishi and San Juan Bank. He was also a war criminal during World War II. He was actually responsible for the sacking of Nanking. He had his own private army in western China during 1931 to 1939. Before they were officially at war, he ran a mercenary army that stripped the wealth out of western China. Um, he was deemed a war criminal at the end of the war, but he got a pardon from the United States and immediately went to work for the CIA in Southeast Asia to help check communism. Now, Ryochi Sasakawa got together with a guy named Pat Brown. Edmund G. Brown. Edmund G. Brown in Indonesia. Now, at the end of World War II, Indonesia used to be a um, holding, a Dutch colonial holding. Uh, now, there was a guy named Sukarno that overthrew Dutch rule and threw out basically Dutch royal shell out of the oil fields in Indonesia. Now, there was a rebellion that was led. There was a coup led by a general named Suwarto. Sasakawa provided the weapons and the mercenaries to make that coup possible. Edmund Pat Brown put together the bankers that issued the loans to the new government to allow Royal Dutch Shell back into Indonesia. Now, during this time, while this was going on, there was two corporations set up, one out of California that was 100% controlled by Pat Brown. The second was based out of Hong Kong, 50% controlled by Pat Brown. The other 50% was Ryochi Sasakawa. Now, during this time, when the Indonesian oil fields get up and running, then Governor um, Edmund Jerry Brown, Jr., starts a new agency called the California Air Resources Board, to, to fix the, um, um, the rules for refining oil in the state of California. The very first regulation ever passed by CARB was a sulfur content regulation about how much sulfur content could be in crude oil refined in the state of California. And the only crude oil in the world that met compliance for that was the oil from Dutch Royal Shell in Indonesia Daddy's oil fields. This is the tie to the Sasakawa Peace Foundation. Um, Sasakawa is also the first funder of the bullet train in California. Now their families have been tied together for a long time. Now we know for a long time that Jerry Brown has wanted to be president of the United States, has thought about running several times. It's never going to happen. I think he's come to that realization. But now we find his buddies, the Sasakawas, backing up a secessionist movement for the state of California. And we need to be aware that it's there and that these guys are out there. They've had this um, set up for a um, couple of years where it's laid dormant. So when they pop up, it's not a new thing. Somebody looks at it and goes, oh, yeah, they've been around for a while. Well, they have been, but they haven't done anything yet. And if you go to their website, they are actually not even looking to really start this secessionist movement until 2020. So they're looking to go after it after the next president. And the funding um, for this operation will come from George Soros and his nonprofits. That's how that. That's how this. That's why they've kept it, you know, quiet, asleep, so to speak, for two or three years. They've established it. They've they've uh, they basically aged it, and uh, it's a it's a real living organization now. Uh, but there's no money in it right right now. But when they get the go time, there'll be money in it. There'll be billions of dollars uh, to help move along the secessionist movement for California when it's politically expedient. And that's what they're kind of hoping for.